So again, in terms of that warm up, the first example is a line. The second example is a quadratic in standard form. And then the third example is a quadratic in vertex form. So in order to graph a line, you start with your y-intercept. My y-intercept is negative 2. My slope is 2. So it goes through 0, negative 2. Goes up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And then you have areas in both directions. Domain and range of a line is all reals. Linear functions have one solution because they have one x-intercept. The quadratic in standard form, I would find my either roots or my vertex. I would graph that point and then apply my transformation of a stretch of two. So what that means is all my y values are going to be double. So instead of going up one rate one from the first point, we go up two rate one. Instead of going up four rate two, I go up eight rate two. So my y values get doubled because my a value is two. That's what the y a plus k does to my numbers. That a is going to stretch it or compress it. And then in example number three, we have no real solutions because the graph's vertex is shifted up and to the right. Therefore, it never crosses the x-axis. Therefore, I have no x-intercepts and no real solutions. If I were to solve that using quadratic formula or completing the square, my answers would have eyes. My answers would have eyes. So again, if you can do that warm up, if you can graph these quadratics and you can find your vertexes, plot those points, then what we're gonna do today is relatively easy. We're going to start with the exact same process as the warm up. We are going to graph our quadratic function. After we graph our function, we are going to test a point that is not from my function. So after I graph that function, I am going to test a point that is not from that function. And then we're going to shade. So then we're going to shade. So quadratic inequalities and shading will be y greater than or equal to, y less than or equal to, y greater than, y less than. We're going to have a y as part of my equation. So quadratic inequality will have a y as part of the equation. with that repeated root idea. If that doesn't work, then you can also graph your y-intercept and find your h and k. So finding h would give me negative b divided by 2a. So again, I see that I get that negative 1. If I plug negative 1 in, the negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. So I see that my k value is 0, that my vertex is on the x-axis. What? Oh, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Have a mirror if you need to, like, fix the contact. All right. So that goes up one and right one because the a value 
is one. So that means I go up one, right one. Then I go up four, right two, because my ya plus k is zero, zero, one, one, two, four, etc. It's symmetric. So I have my five point summary. Now, typically what we do is start connecting those points. This is not just a normal quadratic graph though. This is an inequality, meaning I have an inequality instead of an equal. So instead of connecting that graph to be solid, I have to look at the inequality. An inequality that is greater than but not equal to means that my graph is connected with dash lines. Meaning the points on the quadratic are not solutions. The points on the quadratic are not solutions. The solutions are either going to come inside or outside of the curve. So in this case, I could pick zero, zero as a test point. So is zero greater than zero squared plus two times zero plus one? Is zero greater than one? No, it's not. Therefore, I shade inside the quadratic. Let's graph another example. So we have y is less than or equal to negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. So the plus 5 is my y-intercept. That tells me this graph is going to go through the point 0, 5. My a value is negative 2. It tells me my graph is going to be open down like a frown and stretched by 2. So it's going to open down and strip by 2. The inequality is less than or equal to. So that tells me that my graph is solid. So now I need to know H and K. Okay. Okay. So my graph H value is at positive three fourths. So that tells me the graph is shifted to the right three fourths, plugging three fourths in to find K. I get negative two. Three times three is nine. Four times four is 16. So three fourths squared is nine sixteenths plus three times three, which is nine fourths plus five. Here I can cancel the two and the 16 to get an eight. So I have negative nine eighths. So nine eighths and nine fourths become 18 eighths. So 18 minus nine is nine. So I have nine eighths plus five. Again, that's like a 40. So 49 eighths. Eight goes into 49 six point zero 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 one two five. So it's like six and one eighth. Like point zero one two five ish. But you don't want to have you don't have to drop it perfectly. You just have to be near that. So three fourths. And that 6 value is going to be here. If the y-intercept is at 5, it's 3 fourths to the left. So I have another point that's 3 fourths to the right. And again, 
now we know a way to find our roots so you can find where it crosses or where its x intercepts are. So if your graph is at kind of gross numbers, now we want to find those key numbers like we did in our homework packet. What is your vertex? What is your y intercept? And then what are your x intercepts? So we can do quadratic formula. And in that quadratic formula, you should see your h value. Boom, boom. And then you're adding or subtracting the distance the roots are away. So negative times a negative is positive. 8 times 5 is 40. 9 plus 40 is 49. Perfect square. That means I have real rational roots. So one is at negative three plus seven over negative four, and the other is at negative three minus seven over negative four. So seven minus three is four, four over negative four is negative one. Negative 10 over negative four is going to be at 10 fourths or five halves. This quadratic is solid because the inequality is less than or equal to. So my graph is solid. And then again, picking a test point. I love to pick zero, zero, as long as it's not on my graph. 0 less than 0 plus 0 plus 5. This time I get 0 is less than or equal to 5. 0 is in fact less than or equal to 5. Therefore, we shade inside the reflected down quadratic. So those are quadratic inequalities. Those are quadratic inequalities. As I previously said, we're going to look at inequalities in two ways today. We're going to look at graphing quadratic inequalities. And then we're going to look at solving quadratic inequalities. So we're going to focus a lot on solving quadratic inequalities throughout the remainder of the week along with quadratic regression. Solving quadratic inequalities is a huge part of calc, it's a huge part of physics, because it gives us solution sets. And quadratics are a huge concept in both of those. You see in here, we do a ton of problems, or in terms of like problems like this, with the rockets and throwing the balls and all that. There's a lot of physics involved with quadratics. So a quadratic inequality gives a singular solution that falls on the x-axis. So a quadratic inequality, in general, is shading all of the area. Solving a quadratic inequality is only shading the x-axis. So what I have in red. So quadratic inequalities, you have solving them which is only the x-axis, and you have graphing them, which is where you shade the whole page. So if you are solving, what you'll notice the difference is that these problems no longer have a y. These problems no longer have a y. They have a zero. So the difference is solving has a zero. Just like when we started, we started with factoring. Factoring were y equals equations. Then we moved to solving, which were zero equals equations. Same thing with graphing and solving quadratic inequalities. So case one is if it's inside the quadratic. Case 
two is if the solutions that you shade are on the number line outside. So it's kind of like absolute value problems. You have your ands and your ors. Ands came together. They shaded the middle. Ors were opposite. They went outside. So quadratics that are greater than are like or problems. Quadratics that are less than are like and problems. So great or less than like still follows with quadratics. These are great or so they're or problems. The less than are the and where you shade it in the middle. So that or and and still follows in these problems. So it says solve x squared plus 2x minus 8 less than 0. So this should be an and problem, which means after I graph my quadratic, the solutions could be between the roots. So that means I need to find the roots. So we start these ones a little different. I have to know the roots when I graph these problems. So my roots are going to be either found through the quadratic formula or through factoring. So you look at the problem and you say, okay, are there any factors of negative 8 that are two apart? The answer is yes. So you have x and x, a minus and a plus, because the last number is negative, middle number is positive. So that tells me my bigger factor is positive, my smaller factor is negative. So x minus 2x plus 4 must be less than 0. Therefore, my roots are at 2 and negative 4. My graph is open up, so my vertex is going to be down. And it is in the middle of the two, so there's six apart, so my vertex is at three in the middle, or negative one. So I plug in negative one. So negative eight minus two is negative 10. Negative 10 plus one is negative nine. And then my y-intercept at negative 8, so it's symmetric point at negative 2, 8. These graphs are solid because they don't matter. What matters is what you see in the middle. So these are less than, which is and. So the solution is not including my root but everything between them. You can confirm that by plugging in again, zero. If when I plug in zero, it's true, I know I've graphed my inequality correctly. These have a set of solutions that are limited to the line. So therefore, the solution set to the inequality is such that x lives between 2 and negative 4. The solution set is x lives between 2 and negative 4, not including 2 or negative 4, because it is not equal to in my original inequality. Do another one. Okay, so well, I also have like that check area. So the checking would be okay, what if you pick the number between, greater than, etc.? So I already kind of showed you the check by picking a number that was in the middle of my two roots. You can plug numbers outside and both would fail. So if you plugged in numbers outside, both would fail. So again, 3 is bigger than 2, 
negative five is bigger than it's less than negative four, and you notice they fail, thus making that the solution step. So again, you want to look at the quadratic, find its roots, finding them any way you want. So I could factor. I can also just jump right in to a formula. It is totally your choice. There's not really a right or a wrong. Everything at the end will get you to the same answer. So if I were to have factored this, I would have gotten roots at 1 and negative 6. And again, really, I'm not caring so much about the quadratic. I'm caring about do I shade between or around. So I know my quadratics open up. So I know it looks roughly something like this. But again, I don't care really what it looks like. I care about where do I shade. So now this is zero is gray or, so you want to pick a test point. Maybe you pick zero as your test point and say, okay, is zero greater than zero plus zero minus six? Zero is in fact greater than negative six. So since my test point is true, I shade where my test point is. Looking at my inequality again, this is greater but not equal to, therefore my solutions are from negative 6 to 1. We'll use example 3 as a warm-up tomorrow. Your homework are the 12 problems inside. Six are Y's, six are zeros. So some are number lines, some are graphing quadratic inequalities. Pay careful attention to the difference. 